And welcome back. This week we're going to be talking about the ESP32, that lovely chip down there from Espressive, and it's got dual cores. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can use this within the Arduino IDE. I'll show you how to put the board definitions onto there, and then we're going to put a very, very simple program. Yeah, you've guessed it. It's the Blink program, but we're going to put it on one core, then we're going to put it on the other core, then both cores simultaneously and have them talking to each other. It's really, really easy, and you can do it, even if you're a beginner. Now, the ESP32, of course, is much more capable than just running a little Blink program. So let's put a program on here as well that calculates prime numbers, say to the first 500, and then see how quickly it does it compared to the Arduino Uno. Is it really worth the upgrade? All this and more. Keep tuned. I want to give a big shout out to PCBWay, the sponsors of this video. As you can see from the top of the page here, they're celebrating their fifth anniversary and they've got some goodies to share with you. So they've got a lucky draw, they've got gift shop discounts, and of course, a whole raft of coupons. Just take a look at some of these offers. You might be well surprised, and the quality of their PCBs are second to none. They really are good. Have a look at their website and enjoy their celebrations. Why not try out their website now? $5 for 10 pieces of board. Excellent quality. I personally wish PCB Way a long and prosperous future. Happy birthday, PCB Way. Right, the first thing to tell the Arduino IDE then is wh what about all these balls? Where are they from? So fire up your Arduino IDE, blank sketch like this, doesn't matter what's in it, and go to File, Preferences, and you'll see down here a big long list of stuff, or maybe yours will be blank. It doesn't matter either way. Click on the bit at the end here that brings it up in a nice list, except I've got so many entries it's not a nice list, so let me just expand that. Now the bit that you need for the ESP32 boards is this line here. Now I'm going to put that line immediately below the description in the video here, so what you can do is just pause the video, have a look below the video description, copy that line and paste it into your Arduino IDE now if you're sort of doing this in real time as it were. So paste that in there, then click the OK button, which I'm cleverly hiding. There it is, look, OK. And then OK again. Now at this point, it will tend to freeze a bit as it works out what it needs to do and download boards and things, so just give it a little bit of time. When it's responsive again, go to Tools, Boards, forget what you may or may not have already in here, go to Boards Manager, now, this will also take a little bit of time. Look at the downloading platforms index thing down here. You've got to wait till that finished, otherwise you can't do anything. So we'll come back in about a minute. Right, now it's done now. Okay, the message is gone. So at the top, we want to type in ESP32. And lo and behold, there it is. ESP32 by Espressif Systems. Great. Now, obviously, I've got mine installed, 102 installed. You probably won't have. So select the version, which will be the highest version, 102 in this case, and then click Install. If you've got a lower version in here, you probably need to upgrade at this point. OK, so select the highest version you can, and there will be a button over here that says Upgrade. Whichever one you do, Install or Upgrade, click it, and then click Close down there. And that will also take... Um, a minute or two before it works out what it needs to do so we'll come back in about that time right we're back now at this point we need to select the actual board you've got i say actual close enough is good enough so in your arduino ide go to tools go down to the boards go down to the esp32 section which may might be right at the top for you but wherever it is just keep scrolling down until you reach the esp32 arduino there it is now out of all this big long list of boards here, which goes on quite some time on my thing here, if you know exactly which board you've got and you can find it in that list, then obviously you're going to select that. If you can't quite get to it and you've got a sort of a generic ESP32 board, what I suggest is you select something like the Lolin D32 or the Wemos Lolin 32. I think they're they're the same. Wemos and Lolin now have sort of merged. Um, what else is there? You could select the Adafruit ESP32 Feather. That's pretty generic and vanilla. Something like that. So let's select the Lolin D32 because that's a, a nice standard board. Now at this point, you'll see that the tools bit at the top has gone blue, which means it's thinking about things. So once again, we'll have a little cup of coffee and come back in a minute or so. 
Tra-la, it's done it. Right, so now the tools is, is not blue and you can you can select other things and make sure it's on the right port. Okay, so on my system it's on port 16, for example. So I can select that, at which point it will have another think as it talks to that device and interrogates it and makes sure it really is on the end there. Uh, once it's done that, everything will be fine. It shouldn't ask you too many of these questions, but if it does, just put the same as what as what I've got here. The upload speed is 921600, so that's pretty fast upload. Flash frequency I've got as 80. Partition scheme as default, if it asks you that question at all. Core debug level none. We're not debugging anything at this time. And the port, of course, will be whichever port you've got it on. Right, okay. Now we're ready to do our very first sketch on the ESP32. Right. Now everything we do from here on in will run perfectly well on the Arduino IDE. After all, you've just put the boards on, haven't you? It knows exactly what those boards are and the language and everything else. And there'll be new new sentences, structures that you can use, but it's going to be very, very similar to what you've done already. Now, I'm not going to use the Arduino IDE, but all the sketches will be perfectly Arduino IDE compatible. I'm going to use something called Slurber Workspace. This one here, it's Eclipse. And it's, a, it's just a bit of a a more grown-up one. But to prove the point, this code which we're going to be using in our first example, I'm going to actually paste that into here and um, just show you that it runs absolutely fine. So here's the code we're putting in. Let's go through this line by line because you'll need to understand a little bit of how this works. It is the Blink program though, so there's not a lot to it, okay? So let's uh, let's start from the top. Right, the very first thing you'll notice is that we're defining an LED on pin 27. Now, if you're used to the Arduino IDE, 27 is not a number you'll be used to using. But on the ESP32, there are many pins that you can use, right up to 36, 37. So we're going to choose one that's, on my board at least, fairly easy to use. If we look down here, we notice that pin 27 is in fact right at the top here and pin 26 is underneath here. So I've just chosen those because this is the little Wemos D1 Mini board. If your board is different, you might find that pin 27 is an awkward place and it might be down here somewhere. So don't use 27 if you don't want to, just choose one that's convenient, but make sure it's one that you can use as an output pin. Now on my GitHub, I'll put a list of all the pins that they recommend you do use for input, output and stuff, or just stick with 27. It's safe, we know it works. Well, you can see it running there now. It's not That's not the sketch, by the way. That's the sketch we'll end up with after a few programs. So apart from defining the LED as pin 27, uh, the setup starts the serial monitor at 115200. We might as well make it fast this time because we are talking about speed eventually. And the LED is, of course, an output pin because it's driving that LED. We'll skip over the next two just for now. These two here are basically the blink program. It turns the LED on high for half a second, and then it turns it on low for half a second, 500 milliseconds. And the only extra bit that we're putting in here is this line here to say, which core am I running on? Bearing in mind, there are two cores on this um, particular processor. This says, which core am I running on? And it's the standard loop and the standard setup. Any ideas which core we're running on? We've got two, they're numbered zero and one. Any guesses? Well, let's run and find out. Right, let's build the program. This does take some time, I must say, uh, if you're doing it the very first time, because it's actually going to compile all the underlying supporting libraries for the ESP32. So don't be surprised if it takes a minute or two the first time. After that, it's a little bit quicker. So let's compile and get it onto that uh, board. Right, so it's now uploading to the board which you can just about see in these uh, red lines down here. And it's going to reset it. And the board's running that code, as you can see from down here. It's now blinking one pin on port 27. Brilliant. Well, at least it's running. But what core is it running on? Well, let's fire up the Arduino debug, or serial monitor as it's known, and uh, have a look. There we are. Did you get it right? It's running on core 1, and that is, in fact, the default core. Other tasks are running behind the scenes that you probably don't know about because this chip is actually running a little tiny operating system that we have no involvement in whatsoever. And it's called RTOS, Real Time Operating System. In fact, the real full name is Free RTOS because it is free and it's open source. So this is running a tiny operating system. Think 
Linux or Windows, but it's tiny and it controls the tasks that are running on each core. For example, this is currently running a program to deal with Wi-Fi, even though we're not using it. There's still something in here that runs Wi-Fi and keeps things in order. And Bluetooth. Uh, we haven't got anything in our code to run any of that, but the RTOS most certainly is doing that behind the scenes. So bear that in mind because that might come in useful in a future sketch. So we're running on core one. Okay, how do we change that? How do we change stuff running in our loop from core one to core zero? Just for a bit of fun, but it's all part of the learning process. Okay, we need a different sketch. So this is the new sketch then to run it on core zero. Now you might ask, how am I going to know it's running on core zero? Well, exactly the same way as we did it last time, it will tell us. So let's just walk our way through this. Um, we're still running on pin 27, the LED, fine. But now we have to create a new task. By default, everything runs on task one, and that's all handled behind the scenes for you. But now we're taking control. We're saying, I'm determining whether it's going on task one or a uh, core one right there's core zero i'm going to determine what happens there so first thing i've got to do is make a task so we're going to call it task zero just keep the naming convention the same the setup uh, is okay up to this point here now this is where we create a task now this is saying we're creating a task that's pinned to a core and as its name implies we're saying this task instead of RTOS, RTOS, instead of you deciding where it's going to go, I'm taking this and I'm pinning it to a particular core. So I'm determining which is the best core to put it on, rather than you telling me which one you're going to put it on, which is what it would do normally. You can create tasks and it will just schedule it to the least used core, for example. Okay, so to avoid that, we're going to say, no, I'm telling you where this is going. So the first thing to say is, right, what function are we actually going to run then? Well, normally in an Arduino setup, you have well setup and then you have loop. Well, now we're going to have to create another one called, well, I've called it loop zero. You can actually call it anything you like, but it just makes sense to keep the names the same here. So I'm going to create a, a function called loop zero. You can always see, already see the beginning of it down here. But anyway, let's not jump ahead. Loop zero, that's the name of it, the, t the text name that it wants to have. This is the um, amount of memory that it needs, and I've chosen a thousand for now, but it's probably a bit trickier to, to work out exactly how much memory you're going to have. Um, the input parameters, well, we haven't got any, even though the loop zero down here has said, I've got a parameter, or potentially could have a p uh, parameter, uh, we haven't got any. The priority of the task, well, zero, one, two, whatever we're saying is zero, which is normal. Uh, there's a handle to the task. Uh, what's a handle? Well, a handle is, is basically a name, a pointer within memory that we can get hold of and extract at any time so we can get hold of that task again. So if this task is running, we can say to Artos, look, that task that we called task zero, can you grab hold of it, please? Because I want to talk to it, perhaps, or kill it, whatever. It's just a task handle. We're not using that here. But the most important thing is here is where is the task going to run? Which core? We're saying it's core zero. Okay, and that's it. So we're creating this task. We've told it which function to run. We don't care about any of this really, but we do care about the zero bit. So what does, what does loop zero look like? Well, it looks just like loop, actually. No, no different. Um, the di well, the one difference is it's got to run forever because there's nothing here to say run forever. In the standard Arduino IDE, your loop, why does it run forever? What magic on earth makes your loop run forever? Well, unknown to you perhaps, there's a program above all that that says run the setup and then run the loop forever. That's it. It's just a sort of a shell program that the Arduino IDE puts around your sketch for you. Here, we're having to take a little bit more control. So we're saying, here's loop zero, and within that, I'm running forever. And that's how you say run for, say, for loop. So normally you say for, you know, integer count equals zero, count is less than 20, count plus one, count plus plus, and it'll do it 20 times or whatever. But now we're saying run forever. And here's our exact same code that we had in loop zero. No different at all. The only difference now is we're going to say run on core zero. 
And there's another little caveat. Now, I'm not quite sure about this. I'm still investigating this. In the original loop that we have, the one which this code here was originally in, if you don't put something in here like a delay at one, one millisecond, it won't schedule this task, or it'll schedule it, but not actually run it. I don't know why. There's something going on with Artos. Or maybe it's because we it's the Arduino shell program around the outside. Maybe the compiler is too clever, and it says, well, you haven't put anything in loop, therefore there's nothing for me to do. The end. I don't know. But I will try and find out. Right, so that's it then. So that's basically moving the code to this loop zero. Uh, compile that, and let's see what happens. Fire up the debug window, and there it is, exactly the same, running on core zero, it says. And the LED is still flashing exactly the same way as it did before, no difference. So in fact, it's not that exciting, is it really? We, okay, we've moved the code. The code's now running on a different core, a parallel core to what we were running on. So core one is now just sitting there going, delay one millisecond, delay one millisecond, delay one millisecond, that's all it's doing. But core zero now is flashing our little LED off big deal. Can we not run two blink programs, one on core zero, one on core one? How about that? Good idea. Let's do that next. Right, this is the third sketch then, very, very similar to the ones we've done already. And yes, I'm now in the Eclipse IDE, but just ignore that. All this stuff over here, we we'll just pretend is running on the Arduino IDE because we've already proven that it runs quite happily. So what do we got to do to make this run on two cores? We want two independent blink, pro blink programs running at the same time. Right, the first thing you got to do then is create another task. So we've already created task zero in the last sketch. Now we're creating another one, task one, for core one. And of course, we need another LED pin. So we're using pin 25. As I said, because of my system, it's convenient for me to have the pins close to the top of the board there. So I've got 27 there and 25 right next to it. But as I say, you can choose any pins that are suitable. But if you want to be guaranteed it's going to work, use those pins. Okay. So in the code then, uh, loop zero is what we created last time. And this code in here, after this do forever, we've got all that there and we've got the line in to say which core am I running on. And in loop one now, we're also saying do forever. Um, exactly the same code, except I've made it flash a little bit quicker. Look, so that's 200 milliseconds on and off, whereas the previous one is 500, just so that we can see a difference really. Uh, the setup is almost identical to last time. We've got an extra LED pin to set as an output. The zero core task is exactly the same, running on loop zero, but now we've got an identical one running on core one. And uh, the loop, once again, the original loop does nothing except delay, because we've taken control of all our loops. Now we're going to go, no, nope, we're in charge. We know what we're doing. Right. OK, so let's uh, compile this, um, send it to the board, and then we'll have a look at the debug window and see what happens. Right, it's uploaded. And as you can see now, we have two Blink programs running over here. One flashing quite quickly. That's the red one. So that's the new one we've just added in with a, a slightly faster flash rate. And the original one, which is still going quite happily. Now, these are two independent cores now. This is like having two Arduino boards running side by side. OK, there's a little bit of, you know, joined up thinking in the middle of this, but these are two independent cores running, and one does not affect the other. Obviously not, because where we have the delay in for the first blink, the delay on and delay off, it's not affecting this one at all, is it? It's flashing nice and fast. Great. Let's have a look at uh, the debug window or serial monitor and see what it tells us. And as we can see there, it says, look, running on core 10, 110, 11, We had three ones there for quick. Why is that? Well, because this one here is flashing a lot quicker and running around its little loop a lot quicker than this one, the blue one over there. So you're obviously going to get more core 1 loops completing compared to loop uh, yeah, loop zero, or task zero, or core zero. Too many zeros in this sketch. So there we are. That's it. It's working. Now, you might be thinking at this point, that's great. I can, I can do all my long-running tasks on a different core. Um, for example, on my 
home alone project one of the things i do is go and get the date and time every 10 milliseconds it tries to update it on the screen but when any, anything happens that's long running like i have to upload stuff to the internet that clock display obviously stops because it's being blocked uh, not deliberately i'm not i'm not putting a delay in like that i'm just calling a, a routine going please send this up to the cloud and off it goes up to the cloud but while it's doing all that the clock display has, has frozen because there's only one core to run on now though what i could do and indeed what i'm thinking of is i could run that particular process on a different core and the clock display would run continually without being frozen i mean it's, it's eye candy it's not having any functional effect but it'd just be a good little example to do for a future video perhaps okay now next thing then we've got these two independent blinks running that's great but what if in the real world because it's unlikely we'd be having dual blinks uh, what if we wanted the first core core zero that's flashing a little bit slower so it's got a slow running routine in there to say oi red one fast running thing you can't keep blinking away like that and completing your loop and doing more loops than i am until i'm ready for you to say go so we want core zero talking to core one and saying okay you can continue now and then it runs it goes okay now you can continue again okay so we have the two cores talking to each other via a little semaphore let's talk about that next right we're going to amend that last program just a little bit and the main thing you can see straight away on this uh, sketch is that we've added in this semaphore so it's a type of semaphore handle underscore t and i've called it <laughs> uniquely enough semaphore because that's what it is what's a semaphore a semaphore is just a flag right say yep or no in fact it's not a no it's a case of not there at all or yes it's up the semaphore is available and i'm saying go now there are various types of semaphore and we're not going to cover hardly any of them here we're just going to say there is a semaphore task x you can continue so let's have a look how we're going to use this in it. It's very, very simple. We're going to keep exactly the same LEDs as we had last time. Void loop zero, which is running all by itself slowly. And this time I've made it really slowly. So it goes on for 2,000 seconds, uh, milliseconds. Let's not make it too long, eh? And then off for a second. And then it gives that semaphore away to whoever wants it. It doesn't know who wants it, but it says, I'm prepared now to say, okay, whoever was waiting for me in my long running program, you can now continue if you were waiting. Then there might be no tasks waiting for it, or there might be a task. And of course, in this sketch, we most certainly do have a task. Loop one, which remember was the quick red flashing LED. This is saying, yeah, I'm gonna flash in 500 milliseconds and then wait for a second. And then I'm going to take that semaphore if it's there and I'm prepared to wait forever if need be until that semaphore becomes available. OK, so it's quite simple. You go, well, where does it where does it come from, this semaphore? Well, we've created it at the top of the sketch now. So there it is. But once we've un unless and until we give it here, it's not available. Having given it and then the other task accepts it and goes yeah that's fine i've i've taken it here that's it it's gone now so the semaphore goes up the task if any takes it it goes down and it's gone you can't take it again if you want to take it again if i had two statements like this semaphore take it wouldn't work it would take the first one and then go well there isn't another one to take okay so what we've said is this task cannot continue beyond this point until this program up here this little loop has given the semaphore so what i'm hoping to see is the blue led and the red led starting off together but then the red led just stopping it will finish a lot quicker just stopping and the blue led will ponderously go along and flash its led at a much slower rate and then they'll start again because the blue led has said okay well, let's try it out let's compile this and uh, see what happens so whilst this is compiling let's just have a look at this red and blue going mad down here they're, they're totally out of control neither one of them is controlling the other the red led because it's running so quickly does a lot more iterations than the blue one 
Ah, look, we must be uploading now. It's stopped. Now look, now you see that? They both start together, but the red one finishes a lot, lot sooner and waits, effectively, for the blue one to start again. So if I um, zoom in on the camera there, just to give you a better idea what's going on. So they're both flashed together. The red one finishes very, very quickly, but the blue one hangs about for a lot longer and doesn't let the red one start until it's ready and given that semaphore. So the blue one, as the flash goes off, and after a second, if you see that delay there, after a second, it then gives the semaphore this red one, which has been sitting here now for all that time, going, ah, oh, at last the semaphore's arrived, I can grab it and run round my little loop again. So that's one way of talking between tasks and controlling them so they don't go mad and do their own thing. Isn't that cool? Now, we could talk about other things, about how we share variables and things like that, but I think that's for another time, quite honestly. And if you want to get an ESP32 D1 Mini like I've got, I'll give you links of those and some alternatives. So they're all down there in the links below this video and better off, go to my GitHub because in the GitHub there'll be PDFs and uh, things about the ESP32 that you can go away and read if you want to, of course, but it does give you a lot, lot more detail. And there's a whole world of stuff out there for the ESP32. Believe me, it's, it's mind boggling. And the Espressif help guide is, is brilliant. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, I'll put that up there as well. So it's all about the things you can do with an ESP32 and RTOS and stuff like that. So if you're really going to get into this, you do need to read those. But we'll do some more sketches on the ESP32. Well, especially if you comment and say, yeah, I like this sort of stuff, then I'll definitely be uh, more encouraged to do another video. And that just about brings us to the end of the ESP32 multi-core programming demo. Um, if you're ready to bail now, do so by all means, but don't forget to look at the stuff in the GitHub. If you want to hang around and see the speed test, that is how fast is this little thing compared to the standard Arduino at the back, hang around, but it's uh, it's just a bit of fun really. I mean, we're pretty sure it's going to be fast, but how much faster? That's the question, isn't it? Anyway, if, you, if you're skipping now, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Oh, you're still here. Good, good. Right. What I've um, got here is a bit of code then. I've just sort of slung this together. Um, sort of it half calculates prime numbers um, through a sieve mechanism and then a couple of loops as well. So it's, it's just a bit of nonsense. I just wanted something that, that ran for a little time, basically. Um, so rather than just having loops going backwards and forwards, there's loops within themselves. I'm not sure how much that really sort of proves much that this is actually you know calculating floats and stuff like that and whatever it's just a bit of nonsense as i say but i've loaded this up onto the arduino so let's have a look to see how long that takes if i open up the serial monitor here it will reset the arduino and spring into life so let's see how long it takes to calculate the first 501 prime numbers but with a lot of gubbins in between as well all right, setup's complete. It's running. Running. Okay, it's still running. Calculating. I hope. I hope it's doing something. Ah, there we are. 9,885 milliseconds. So a fraction short of 10 seconds then. Okay, it's doing it again now. Let's, do, let's make sure the second iteration then is pretty much the same as what the first one is. Make sure we didn't do anything funny. Oh, there we are, 980. Oh, it took another millisecond. Look at that. Okay, well, that's good enough. So we'll call it, you know, 9.8 seconds. Right, let's switch over to the ESP32 now and upload the process. Exactly the same program. This program that you're seeing here, exactly the same, no changes. And uh, see what that does. All oh, right, it's trying to upload. Here we go. It's uploading the program now. So keep your eye on the ID. Hang on, what? Okay, same program running on the ESP32, as you can see there, 61 milliseconds compared to 10 seconds. Hmm, interesting, yes? Well, obviously I knew the answer because I've done this before and it surprised me just how much faster it was. In fact, how many times faster does that, does that make it? I can't do this in my head. I'm going to have to get the calculator and uh, come back to you. Well, the calculator tells me that it is, in fact, 160 times faster for this particular bit of code anyway. Obviously, if you're going to have things like um, I squared C, SPI, 
anything like that's going to slow it down. It can only run as fast as the bus will let it. But natively, core-wise, 160 times faster. And this is on a single core, remember. And we could put this same calculation, and I'm not going to do it, sorry. We could put this same calculation on both cores, and they would both run in 61 milliseconds. It's just amazing, isn't it, how much faster. Well worth um, having a look, don't you think? Because even if you just wanted a fairly basic, well, even if you wanted to convert all your code from the Arduino over to an ESP32 without any of this dual core stuff, it would run approximately 160 times faster than what it does already. If you've got, you know, a fairly meaty type program, or indeed an ESP30, uh, ESP8266, which is probably about 10 times faster than an Arduino. If you're struggling with that, if you've got something like Node-RED on there, um, you know, home automation type stuff, this is going to just knock spots off of that. And if you code it right, you can use both cores and make it really, really productive. Okay, well, there we are then. Interesting little end to the video, isn't it? Okay, so comment down below. Give me a thumbs up if you think it's worth it. Um, follow any links. There may be affiliate links. Uh, I'm not sure yet. There might be, especially to Banggood. And uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.